How's it going guys? Today's build is another mechanical keyboard, but not just any old mech build. I'm going to try and make the lowest profile mechanical keyboard with full size switches. Bit of a mouthful, but you get the idea. So I went and ordered a low profile 60% case with a new aluminum plate. Now the problem I have with low profile cases is they don't actually make your keyboard any lower. All they do is make it so there's less case and expose the switches. And I'll be honest, I think this floating keycap slash exposed switch design is the ugliest style of mech boards. But hey, some people like that design I guess. So I'm going to machine out the bottom of this low profile case and try and fit the PCB, the plate and the switches all within about 15 millimeters of space. Let's just say it's going to be razor thin tolerances. I'm going to tape up the bottom of the case to stop it from scratching the anodization. Then I'll drill two big unsightly holes in the case so I can fix it to the table on my mill. For the actual machining I'm using a 12mm end mill, which is far from ideal for this sort of operation, but it's the biggest bit I have, so I'm going to try and make it work. Now in all honesty, a couple extra millimetres on the bottom of this case would have been perfect, but this is the one I got, so I'm going to have to try and make it work. For the machining, I've taken the bottom down about 2-3 to three millimeters and removed all of the standoffs in the case, so the PCB can sit flat on the very bottom. And let's just say, this took a very long time to do. All the machining footage you're watching, while relaxing, is sped up around 20 times its original speed. This is the actual speed of the footage. As you can imagine, this took a long time to do. By the end of the machining, the bottom of the case is paper thin. There were even a few times where the milling bit ripped a hole in the bottom, it's that fragile. Bit unsightly, but luckily the top of the case and all the sides look perfect. It's only the bottom that looks, shall we say, less than ideal. And with the extra material removed, it is incredibly light, only about 150 grams. For reference, my phone weighs more than that. Now I did lube the switches, but I didn't film it. So here's some footage of me lubing some switches from a different project using this board. Great, with the hard work of lubing the switches done, I can put the board together. So let's move on to putting all the switches in the new plate. Then to screw straight through the plate and the PCBs to the back of the case. And that's all the hard parts done. For the keycaps, I have two options. I have these low profile grey PBT ones. They are a few millimetres smaller than regular keycaps, but this is YouTube and the finished product has to look exciting. And these will look good in the thumbnail. So I'm using these double shot PBT Akko Samurai keycaps. This set includes both the blue and burgundy caps. I of course am going with the burgundy. So I feel as though some reference is needed. You're probably thinking, well, that just looks like a normal keyboard. Right, well, no. So this here is the case that I purchased, and that's how it's supposed to look. 
The plate is almost flush with the case, and most of the switches and the entire keycap is above the case. Looks terrible, right? Well, at least to me anyway. So I've taken mine all the way down so that the keycaps sit ever so slightly below the lining of the case. The highest part of the board is about 23 to 25 millimeters deep, depending on which keycaps I'm using. All joking aside, this is actually a really low profile board. I mean, just physically, you wouldn't be able to go any thinner with full size switches. You can just look at the back of the board and the aluminum is razor thin. So how does this compare to something like the actual low profile boards? Well, it's still taller, obviously, but, but, they have low profile switches, low profile keycaps, and the hideous exposed switch design. But all in all, for what I wanted to do with this board, as something portable that I could put in a backpack or I could use on the go, it turned out pretty good. I'm happy with it, and I think I will be using it. So let's see how it types and sounds. Basically, no sound dampening. Just remember that. Well, it's not terrible, for a portable mech board anyway. It's good, it's lightweight, it's got a slim design, but compared to something like my daily driver, you can guess that I won't be switching, at least for the time being. So that's all for today's video. Enjoy some of the beauty shots of this board, I've got other mechanical keyboard content you can check out, or a bunch of other content on my channel that may pique your interest. You never know until you have a look. Thanks for watching guys, have a good one. I see you've made it to the end. Why don't you subscribe and check out some of our other builds? Go on, what are you waiting for?